Welcome to Unfederal Reserve. Unfed's community members play a pivotal role in our design, governance, development, and marketing today. And after launch, token holders will have access to sequestered data, trending tools, reports, and other information generated by the platform. In doing so, they've helped us create a safe harbor in the wide ocean of DeFi. Welcome aboard. Visit unfederalreserve.com today. Hi, and welcome to this week's Quick Take. I'm Howard Krieger, CEO of Unfederal Reserve. If you like uh, this broadcast or any of the other ones you've had a chance to peruse, please be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, and as long as you guys are keep interested in seeing what we have to say, we'll keep making it. So this week, we're going to talk about uh, the custodia application to the Federal Reserve uh, to become a nationally chartered bank, non-FDIC insured national chartered bank, um, where, uh, and I bring up that specificity because that's something the Federal Reserve brings up in its application as one of the risk factors. Um, as folks that have been loosely following the story, uh, Custodia Bank, uh, formerly Avante, uh, started by uh, Caitlin Long, who's a, 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 I don't know what you call her, an icon uh, in U.S. Uh, crypto asset blockchain uh, industry, um, if you have an opportunity to read her work, see um, her interviews, um, she really has her pulse on both U.S. banking, some of the challenges with banking, challenges with the underbanked, uh, and has a foresight and vision that is just um, bar none in the space. Uh, so if um, you have a chance to follow one like her, I would do that also. Uh, but she runs a bank. That bank is a, a state chartered entity out of Wyoming. It's actually a special purpose entity. We'll talk about that very briefly. Um, they, they applied for a national charter uh, two years ago, um, and it's taken some time, but the board at the Fed came down um, particularly hard on this application. Now, I will say, uh, A, just so you know, not a lawyer. I'm also not a tax professional. This is just my own opinions and not uh, the opinions of the company, affiliates, agents, etc. cetera. Um, I've not read a lot of, I've not read ever really a Fed decision on whether or not to charter a national bank. So I can't tell if this language is, is harsh with respect to other rejections. All I could say is relative to what I've seen organizations put out, even government uh, entities, um, some of the language and words that were used and words are what we focus on here on our quick takes um, was incredibly, um, I would say damaging uh, and really spoke, you know, to me, it spoke to me um, as if the Fed is saying that never not now, not ever, uh, are crypto assets and digital assets uh, going to be allowed to be uh, at the forefront of uh, any sort of uh, nationally chartered banking institution. I mean, they really, really, like I said, when you read this language, at least this regime has no interest in crypto asset banking. If you take these words to be a kind of microcosm for its, its uh, feeling more broadly now, now, now we're going to get through the docs, but, you know, as my dad was always fond of saying, the golden rule is, you know, he or she who has the gold makes the rules. If we were talking about a bank that relied on CBDCs, those, you know, the government issued dollars, um, maybe their tune's a little different, right? Because now you have a little bit of the the, the system um, supporting the economics of another little group here. Um, but for Custodia, they don't qualify you know in that in that camp they're not a cbdc bank they, they have their own model uh let's let's get into it but like i said if you read it the way i read it this this board is not going to be entertaining crypto banking um anytime in the near future uh even backtracking on some of the earlier things that they and the occ and some of their sister and cousin entities uh in uh in the treasury uh, have stated. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. Boop. And there I go. So Federal Reserve announces denial of the application. Um, and custody is a special purpose depository institution. So SPDI, chartered in Wyoming. Um, and right here, I'm going to call this out. They propose novel and untested crypto activities 
including issuing a crypto asset called the Avit, A-V-I-T, uh, on open blockchain and decentralized networks. Now, we know from prior quick takes when the FDIC, the OCC, and the Fed came out, and they said that a bank cannot hold digital assets, crypto, as principal currency at all, hard stop. But then also, um, they alluded to, uh, and if not them, it was the SEC, that that essentially a crypto asset on an open public or decentralized network uh, could be considered a security. Um, certainly, actually, you know, know what they, they were saying? The, the, the Fed and the OCC came back and said that, um, that a bank can't properly manage the risk associated with a crypto asset on an open public or decentralized network. And that was what they, they, they were saying is that they don't believe that anybody can manage it. This is the board, not me. The board is saying that they don't believe anybody can manage the risk associated with a crypto asset on an open public or decentralized network. That's their opinion. But again, golden rule. Um, so in light, the firm's application was inconsistent with the factors evaluated. We'll talk about that. Some interesting fun facts about how the Fed uh, assesses whether or not to uh, allow a bank to enter, um, but hard denial. Um, now, in light of this, and I think it's at the same time, Custodia is in a lawsuit, I believe, or, or they're trying to sue the Fed for sitting on this application for as long as they did um, and for just the general way in which they went about their process. Not sure about that. We're not going to talk about lawsuits. Again, not a lawyer, not a tax professional, but we're going to talk. This is the Fed's position. This is not This is not balanced. You know, here's, here's the thing to remember. This is not a balanced statement. This is the, the judging body, the board of the Federal Reserve saying no, and they're not going to give an ounce here. They're not going to give, they're not going to give Caitlin or Custodia any credit whatsoever. And they're going to make statements and generalizations that we are expected to take as fact um, because they're saying it. Um, but just like with anything in any market, you have to do your own research. Uh, what is nice about this is if you uh, look at this order, uh, order 2302 uh, from January 27. Now, mind you, they just got released 60 days later. I don't know if that's standard or not, but it took 60 days. Uh, in this order, they actually have the custodia proposal, heavily redacted, but a lot of interesting stuff that Caitlin and custodia are thinking about. And, and I, I I will bet dollars to donuts that a decade from now, when we do have banks that are half and half digital asset fiat, uh, the things that Caitlin and custodia propose here are going to be part and parcel the types of things that we'll see that bank offer. So this Fed may not feel like there's a way to manage the risk and the business and the blah, blah, blah. But the reality is, is that it's this, this is really going to make its way in. Um, so custodia, here you go, de novo special purpose depository institution requested uh, the uh, to become a member of the Federal Reserve System. Um, they would focus entirely on the crypto asset sector. Now, remember, this is also, this application is before the events of Silicon Valley Bank collapsing. But remember, part of the part of the reason Sil Silicon Valley Bank, Silvergate, and Signature were taken out was their concentration in uh, startups and venture capital. So here, with Custodia focusing on crypto assets, like the beyond the bleeding edge of, of finance, if, if you thought a fintech or, or, or a, a VC-focused bank was risky, you could imagine the Fed's going to look at this and be like, hey, are you kidding me? But, you know, true to form. Um, they wanted to be a compliant bridge. This is Custodia, a compliant bridge between the U.S. dollar payment system and the crypto asset ecosystem. This is the, the kind of the crux here, right? So Custodia Bank wasn't trying to be your mom, pop, uh, you, you know, the bank from It's a Wonderful Life making like farm loans and mortgages and, and helping you save for retirement and vacations and student loans and stuff. They were literally forming to provide, um, call it a limited offering of core banking products and services, right? They weren't going to be making loans. They weren't going to do anything like that. They they just wanted to be a, a, a safe place to put cash 
but all for the interconnectivity of cash and the crypto ecosystem. And that's largely through the development of their Ovid token, um, a reserved backed currency. And again, I'm not going to go into what Ovid is, and you can look up what Custodia's business model is, but this is how the Fed views their proposal. It's going to be a limited service offering bank, um, primarily focused on crypto asset sector and to become the bridge between uh, the system um, and the U.S. dollar payment system. And I think the Fed took particular exception to that, but that's just my my two cents. Um, great footnotes. You know, if you're a student of crypto assets and digital assets and finance, you should really read the footnotes here. The the Fed does a great job of saying of laying it out so that you know the next applicant would hopefully review this, or the legal team for the next applicant would would try to address these things or not apply if they didn't think they could. Um, they mentioned here that Custodia is not fee seeking depository insurance, and they mentioned it a couple of times. Um, I thought it was interesting that, hey, look, they put this thing in two years ago, and, it's, and it took the Fed two years to come back with a response. I mean, give me a break, right? Like, there's more than one person working at the Fed. Um, so clearly, there are other factors at play here. Um, I know this is an 86-page proposal. We're not going to look at all 86 pages. But we are going to look at some of the factors. Okay, so when the Fed is deciding whether or not to charter a bank, they look at financial, managerial, and corporate factors. And I had to look up what those, like what that meant. Um, and we'll share the uh, the managerial factor. I did find a write up on that. So right here, they start each section basically saying that the board doesn't believe that approval would be consistent with this. And then they say why. In, in this first case, the managerial factor, their concerns had to do with a lack of uh, what they felt was uh, the, the Fed felt there was a, a lack of demonstration on the part of the custodia um, <clears throat> applicant as part of its pre-membership findings to demonstrate that uh, that the management of Custodia could safely and soundly manage the risks of its day one activities. So, so the Fed is making the judgment that, like, look, there's not a big management track record because, again, they're not they're a state chartered entity, and you know, you know, and presumably they have some customers and some activity, but they don't have activity to the breadth or over the time um, or through enough different uh, market ecosystems and environments where the Fed didn't feel the management team had the track record to demonstrate um, their ability to serve, especially a very risky sector, um, in the presence of illicit finance, safety, and soundness risks. And that's really what the Fed's about, safety and soundness. Um, under the Federal Reserve Act, Section 913, we talked about it in a prior uh, write-up where it talks about state chartered institutions versus um, nationally chartered institutions, they're looking, the, the, the board states unequivocally, they're looking at the ability for the institution to deliver these banking services while meeting safety and soundness requirements. And that's what they say. And frankly, they, that gives them a really broad pen or a broad brush because all they have to do is, all the Fed has to do is say, we don't think you can do it. And it's done. It's done. There's no there, there's no rebutting because it's a qualitative judgment. Uh, very convenient on the part of the Fed to have that. Um, so they found significant deficiencies in the ability to manage the risks, but uh, they didn't go into the specific deficiencies. I know it's hard to prove a negative, but uh, they said that um, they felt like the risk management controls were insufficient. But we we don't see we're not given the ability to make that judgment ourselves, Caitlin very good at using the court of public opinion. Perhaps Caitlin will share at some point uh, the actual risk management controls that exist. I don't think there's really a competitive advantage, uh, you know, to, to, to holding that stuff close to the chest, like, oh, wow, we're not going to share it because, you know, some other bank can, can use our cool whiz bang risk management control system. I don't think that's really a risk. Um, maybe she doesn't release it because maybe there are challenges, but we're just we have to take the Fed's word here. That that was their impression, um, and they felt that the controls around IT, internal audit, projections, liquidity, um, were all insufficient. I mean, and these are major, you know, particularly with respect, like these are the bigs. You know, this is the Fed saying you don't know how to run a bank, um, which is pretty damning. 
And um, I, I hope uh, really, you know, again, knowing Caitlin and and um, Zev and some of the other folks over there, super competent bankers, um, I, I I would love to see the retort there. Um, here where it talks about, despite the deficiencies, Custodius proposed to expand operations soon after approval to focus exclusively on novel crypto asset related activities. This is the of it. This is the, this is, look, Custodia is basically applying to offer some basic core services. And then immediately after, they're going to jump into novel crypto asset related activities, an unprecedented business model with heightened risks that no state member bank has previously been approved to conduct. So they're basically, so here the Fed is even reaching beyond their own authority ish and into the states and saying, look, there's not even a state bank that can do what you want to do at, at the federal level. Like, do you really think it's going to fly here? Um, they said, you know, they haven't developed a full risk management framework related to those activities uh, or the risks of its undiversified business model. So the Fed's saying, like, look, you're you're too my, you know, you're too focused in one area, and the one area you're focused on happens to be the riskiest. Um, they talk about more controls, and then it says the number and degree of shortcomings identified suggest the management's experience is not commensurate with the firm's intended risk profile. So this is even a little bit more of an attack, right? Where they're basically saying the Fed is saying, "Look, um, you knew, Custodia, that you're taking on these heightened risks." Um, Given all the shortcomings we observed, we're, um, we're challenged. The Fed is challenging Custodia's leadership's ability to to properly put risk factors and controls in place. Almost as if to say, look, even if we were, even if we, the Fed, were okay with the risk profile that that you were taking on, even if we believed that the proper tools existed to manage that risk, we don't believe that your management team has the experience to deliver uh, safety and soundness uh, commensurate with the intended risk profile. And th that's that's harsh. That that that's a harsh statement, right? That, that now you're now you're making it personal. Now you, now you come you're, you're saying, hey, three p.m. in the parking lot. You know, three p.m. in the parking lot. So um, do 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 right there. So right last paragraph. Accordingly, considerations relating to the factor are so adverse as on their own to present. Their, their ground for denying the application. So the Fed read page, by page five of an 86 page document, by page five, they're saying, look, the first thing we looked at was so insufficient in terms of how you addressed it, that that should deny the application. We can be done on page six, but since you came to us, we're going to do our thing, and now we're going to go through the other factors. I don't go through all the um, the finance factors and the uh, competitive uh, factors here, but there are PDFs that describe the types of things that they they want to see, right? And it has to do with capabilities and performance of management and the board of directors, uh, the quality of oversight, the ability uh, to plan and respond to risks, uh, the internal policies and controls being sufficient accuracy, timeliness, effectiveness of management information, um, adequacy of audits, compliance, responsiveness, the depth, management depth, just, just how big is your corporate trait, uh, the extent to the, the, you know, that there's some dominant influence or, or, or concentration of authority, right? Where like, hey, maybe one of the big stockholders happens to open the biggest farm in town, there's a drought, and, the, and the, that influential person now like takes the bank and tries to steer it that way. So, What's interesting, though, is, and this is a problem, a, a common problem, uh, when it comes uh, with um, these sort of government required approvals. You know, the the assumption is made that the institution applying for membership will already have in place 80, 90 percent of what an approved entity will already have. The reality is that it's like the golden rule, but but rather than the board saying, hey, we have the gold, so we get to decide who gets in and out. Um, you almost have to be an established, well-capitalized, like well-oiled machine with a ton of depth and structure before you even approach the national charter level, uh, which again, it's their prerogative, but it really stymies innovation in, in um, 
in certain spaces. Now, this is banking. So like, you know, from a banking perspective, do you really want innovation and a lot of new whiz bang gadgets? Uh, I think we're learning from the current crisis that, yeah, banks aren't necessarily just like big metal saves like Scrooge McDuck used to swim in, but rather um, are for-profit entities themselves. Uh, but to meet the threshold that the Fed has put in place, you need to be of such scale already that um, the approval becomes kind of like a, a how do you call it? Like it, it, it it's almost self-fulfilling. It's almost automatic. Like the approval would be automatic because the bank is already doing those things um, that qualify. It's almost like getting a promotion at work, right? A lot of times the people that get promoted have already been doing the job for a year. And then, and the promotion is just them being recognized for doing work beyond what they were hired to do. It seems the same thing here with this national charter that basically if you if you look at the managerial factors that are required and the claims of deficiency here, well, you know, if Custody had been in business for 50 years and had, you know, a thousand clients and, and was already moving millions of dollars under uh, their state charter, then maybe the national folks would say, okay, yeah, you have the, you have succession planning and you have depth and you have a nimble board and you don't have, uh, you know, you're properly diversified and all this other stuff. But uh, here it's almost like, this is a huge barrier uh, to innovation and banking and a huge gate to innovation and banking. In and of itself, banking crypto assets will not get you a federal charter. In fact, any kind of industry concentration, I think for the next decade is going to cause denial. And I don't care if that concentration is your boardwalk entities, construction, real estate. If you are a bank applying for a national charter, you've got to be diversified. So the finan financial factor. Um, board does not believe approval will be consistent with the financial factor. Well, of course, right? So, so right here, they start right with the second thing and then they probably do this on all the applications, right? Like they kind of give you the conclusion and then they get into why, um, this, you, you know, here the fed leans on some of these other things, the financial stability oversight councils observation that, that crypto assets are driven by speculation and sentiment, that there's not a clear economic use case tied to it. Again, broad generalization, not true in the case of a number of things. Um, then, of course, they start, you, you know, looking at the, the worst of us, right? Like the entities that um, have have really been those black marks on crypto in 2022. Uh, and, you know, again, the application was in 2021. So it's really, it's cute that the Fed pulls up recent disasters and uses that to, to reject an application that they sat on for a year and a half. But again their prerogative to do so. Uh, but they're they're calling this out that, look, the industry that Custodia wants to concentrate on, too volatile for uh, safety and soundness. Um, it does say Custodia has sufficient capital to sustain operations. That's good. That means that on the investor side, people believe in Caitlin as they should, that she can deliver and Custodia can deliver. Um, again, the, the pro forma financial statements that I guess the Fed reviewed, assume that Custodia would be permitted to engage in novel crypto asset-related activities. There's that term novel uh, again. Um, and the, the long-term, the Fed also points out that the long-term viability of Custodia requires engaging in these risky activities. And the Fed didn't like that either. They're like, okay, not only are you going to serve a risky sector and you're trying to be a bridge and you're going to engage in novel ideas after we approve, but your whole profitability and, and uh, what have you is going to um, be based on your whole ability to be a viable banking entity in your community depends on delivery of these novel concepts. Um, okay. So accordingly, considerations, uh, are so adverse as to prevent sufficient grounds on their own for warranting denial of the application. So again, they go back to this and say, look, um, like Dianu, right? Like even if the, the other factor wasn't enough, this one is enough uh, to deny, deny the application. And then corporate power factors, Right here, they said the speculative and volatile nature of the crypto asset ecosystem. The board does not believe that this business model is consistent with the purposes of the Federal Reserve Act. Safety and soundness safety and soundness. Oh, and here I point out, right? Again, they mentioned novel 17 times, 17 times. They mentioned novel in an 86 uh, page presentation. And believe me, half of this presentation is like, doesn't use the word novel because it's talking about what custodia plans to do. 
So they're really driving home because words are important. The Fed does not want to see novel banking products in, you know, they don't want to see crypto assets as this, uh, you know, concentration of it. And, and they, they also don't want to see novel activities related to it. Um, that's pretty brutal. So, and then of course, uh, they talk about the, you know, uninsured deposit institution. Um, and so that custodian would not be subject to a host of requirements tied to an insured one. So they're kind of saying like, look, custodia, even if you came in, you, you want to come in and you want to be uninsured. Well, that not only do you not have to play by insured entity requirements, but now you're also telling us that you're going to be even riskier. Um, you know, you're not going to be insured. So you're not going to abide by the requirements that insured entities do. So you're in a risky asset taking on novel business and you're going to do it in a risky manner uh, with a management team that they don't think could, uh, that meets the risk profile that even that they intended. Um, and they also, you know, here the Fed calls out like that, look, you are basically relying on, um, even if granted membership, right, the uh, the resolution would be required to be conducted outside the FDIC's proven effective receivership process. So, and instead would rely on Wyoming's untested state laws. So Wyoming's put laws in, into effect that make it very crypto friendly. Disclaimer, Unfederal Reserve is a Wyoming company. We love being chartered in Wyoming. Um, and yeah, they are, they, they get it. They're forward thinking, they're blockchain friendly. Here, the Fed is saying that that is actually another risk that, hey, you cannot be a safe and sound bank if you are going to basically be living on, under this untested state uh, regime. Um, convenience and needs factor, you know, you, you know, the, the other thing is that when the board is chartering a bank, they want to make sure that the banks they're chartering are going to be helping the community they serve, not just the bank itself. Uh, and, um, it, here they're actually saying the opposite. The Fed believes that custodia would actually provide a risk, would be a risk because, you know, you let this bank in, they're banking crypto, they have this novel product that blends payment systems. Um, if if Custodia, a nationally approved bank, were to have a run and they're they're uninsured, uh, and and as we talked about with the the new bank term funding program, the the first thing you have to be is under the FDIC umbrella. Here, the Fed is saying that this could swing completely the opposite way. You know, it's bad enough when some of these big unregulated crypto companies like Voyager and BlockFi all go sideways. You know, can you imagine a nationally chartered uninsured bank that was just approved going sideways? What bigger risk would it would that propose to the community? Um, and I, uh, again, it's unclear whether Custodia would be able to comply with applicable consumer protection requirements. So there you go. So there the Fed basically in the first 10 pages completely wrecks it. Now we're not going to get into the background and stuff like that. Um, I will say some interesting points. Uh, again, please read this stuff. Custodia plans to target core banking business from crypto related customers that it believes are underserved. So their argument for the community is that, look, there's a lot of crypto companies that can't bank. So we're going to help it. Um, they do talk about Ovid. Uh, as as you know, this being uh, an Ovid is there uh, in the initial business plan. Um, it talks about Ovids. The Fed calls them stable coins, uh, but here Custodia is looking for Ovids. Their minted token that would be a hundred percent backed by risk free assets, held in a reserve account, um, would be treated like a deposit. Uh, even though it's uninsured, so it doesn't really matter. You know that 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 part is may, maybe down the road it would matter if they got insurance. Now you have the the of it being uh, uh, considered a bank deposit, and it would be insured. Now custodia is basically printing a digital form of money. Now they now they, they say they're taking money out of the market and putting it into risk free assets. Um, but you know we're seeing that now, right? Like if you have a run on those deposits and you have to sell those risk-free assets at a discount, you're no better than a regional bank that that put their money into AAA securities, and now those AAA securities are underwater. So unless unless the custodian was going to sit on cash, you know, cash on cash, um, then uh, and even that 
you know, that cash would have to be just dispersed enough to be protected unless they're going to literally have it all in Fort Knox. Uh, there, there's a lot of challenges here, but you see their goal, right? Their goal here is to create this of it and have it treated as a bank deposit. And the Fed is like, no. Um, I think if I, hopefully I don't pass through it, they actually talk about here where the of it should really be considered like a stable coin. And um, they bring up, they don't claim that stable coins are securities here, but they do they 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 do uh, allude to the fact that stable coins might be considered securities. Like it's it's an ongoing open issue. Um, they also mention that they are on uh, the Ethereum network and and that there's there's gas charges or or, or rather the yields on on the staking of of that Ethereum. Uh, might be, you know, might trigger that to be uh, a, a security, right? Like that, that if Ethereum is a security and the bank's going to hold it as a reserve currency, then, uh, or, you know, to help with, with transaction costs. Um, now they're not, now custodia is, is would overnight be dealing in, in unregistered securities for its customers and the feds like you know so many so many so many flags for those guys um so custody uh crypto custody holding bitcoin and ether as principal so this is this is important and that's why i highlighted it custody is proposed to provide custody services for crypto assets which it says it's permissible under occ interpretive letter letter 1170 you should download download and read this letter this is a very interesting letter because it came out i think in 2020 and and the idea was like, look, we know that banks are looking to do this. As long as you don't make it your big thing and you want to hold a little crypto, you can hold a little crypto, right? But it can't be, you know, do it at your own risk. Now, they've kind of backtracked since interpretive letter 1170 um, in that joint statement at the end of last year, at the end of 2022, where they were like open, um, you know, o- open blockchain or open protocol uh, crypto on decentralized exchanges are something banks should never hold. Uh, but here, this earlier letter says that banks can hold it. So this talks to the clarity. Uh, Custodia is, assert- is asserting that part of the activity that they're going to provide, this service for custodying crypto assets and facilitating transfers, would require them to hold a small amount of Bitcoin and Ether in a principal capacity to cover those fees and comply with law. Um, the the Fed doesn't like that, right? So the, the Fed doesn't. The Fed has come out and said you cannot hold crypto as a principal asset. You go cash, real estate, uh, some some high graded bonds, but you can't hold crypto. And and here, Custodia is, is is again they submitted this before uh, the OCC came out. And the Fed came out and said, you, you can't hold crypto as principal. Um, but here in Kasoya's application, they fully disclose their intent to do so, which not good. National bank permissibility. The board has not identified any authority to support the position that national banks are big, are permitted to hold Bitcoin, Ether, or most crypto assets are at principal for any purpose, right? Here's the Fed in black and white. The board has not identified any authority. To, that supports the position that national banks are allowed to hold Bitcoin in Ether and most other crypto assets as principal. The Fed saying we don't, it's nowhere. It's not in our stuff. It's not in, it's not in our in our little, uh, you know, the OCC, the ACC, the, all these little departments, divisions. Nowhere has has have they copped to um, supporting the position that national banks can hold it. And until this changes, frankly, if you're trying to count down as to like when is crypto going to be as commonplace as my McDonald's or my Disney stock. Well, when this occurs or when we get close, at least on Bitcoin, because it is so liquid um, and doesn't have that proof of stake uh, issue that makes it a potential security, right? Like if, if, if the Fed doesn't allow Bitcoin to be held as a reserve currency uh, or a principal asset, then how are you going to get Ethereum or any of these other tokens? I mean, that's just kind of is what it is. All right, cool. So that was the big stuff. That was the main stuff I wanted to show you. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, it talks about here, uh, it, it imposed a condition to prohibit. See, it, they're actually saying that if they approved, they would actually prohibit that activity. 
and that the in it, and so they're, they're, the the Fed's basically saying, look, nothing in our historical documents says that you can hold crypto, uh, ether, Bitcoin, etc., as principal currency. If we were to approve custodia, which they tell you in the first five pages, they're not going to do it. If we were to approve them, we would have to prohibit this act. And if we were to prohibit this act, that inability would destroy custodia's pro forma, precluding them from being able to deliver on the the business model that they provided on their pro forma. So it's almost like the Fed saying like, look, even if we did approve you, we wouldn't approve this and not approving this would wreck you just, you, you know, in and of itself, regardless of the riskiness of the, of the, uh, the asset. Here's the part on the issuance of AVITs. I hadn't looked at it really because Custodia describes an AVIT, a proposed token that be issued um, on two blockchains as a transferable record, a negotiable instrument, um, and a deposit representing the equivalent of a cashier's check, right? They'd be circulating tokens that could be transferred indefinitely uh, to an unlimited number of successive holders. So basically, Ovitz would be just out there in the ether like U.S. dollars. Um, that is a concern because it talks about here where it talks, it, it considers the Ovitz to basically be a stable coin. And they, they talk about the OCC interpretive letters specifically permit a national bank to issue stable coins. This is probably because of like figure, right? And their USDF. Um, I'm trying to think the Signet token that Signature was using was really a stable coin. Um, when you think about it, that Signet token, and I'm sure there's others, um, but it allows a national bank to issue these provided the bank can demonstrate that has the controls to, to conduct the activity in a safe, sound manner. Namely, namely, the bank has to know everyone who holds every single ounce of produced stablecoin. If it doesn't know where it is, if the bank can't tell you, can't produce a list of, of every single human being that is holding some or, or entity that has the stablecoin, not permit, permitted. Um, and the, the board's thought was that uh, to issue a token that represents a dollar deposit and circulates indefinitely on an open and decentralized network where a person's unknown to the bank can hold the asset and neither the bank nor its vendors have control over the government policy of the networks, including, for example, consensus mechanisms uh, and transactions. The board's preliminary concerns include the following. Yeah, has the board has broader concerns about a proposal involving the issuance of a token that that becomes basically another free-floating stable. But in this case, would be issued by a bank, and therefore they want considered a banking deposit, which of course, if the FDIC were to back, then now, and, and now with the bank fund uh, window, well, they're not FDIC insured, so they wouldn't qualify there. But clearly the Fed would be taking on the risk of a whole new mechanism for printing dollars and have no control over where those dollars go. Not that they have a ton of control over where the greenbacks go now, but I think if they could undo that mistake, in their mind, a mistake, they would. Remember, they're they're here, the Fed is here for safety and soundness. All right, good. So I think that is the, the crux of it. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, so uh, some recommendations. One, read in full the custodia application, because I think that Caitlin has done an excellent job of laying out the framework for digital banking in the future. Um, if I had a crystal ball that was like slightly clear, um, if I'm a, a super regional bank, right? If I got 20 to 30 billion in deposits uh, and uh, we get through this current bank uh, you know, crisis that's happening right now. So you're talking maybe June, July, other news stories come up. There's other things to worry about. Uh, and, and I'm a happy, stable bank. And maybe I'm feeling a little entrepreneurial. Maybe I reach out to Caitlin and I say, hey, is there a way to take the framework of custodia and bring it into a bank that's already diversified, that already has the controls, that already has the, the technology um, to deliver safety and soundness. Maybe the legacy stuff for Signature, right? Like Signature was doing a lot of this in-house through their Signet program. Those assets didn't get picked up by um, uh, whoever, uh, who, had, who ended up buying uh, the Signature book, Cross River. I don't remember. But it's one of those things where, that there's a good core here. 
the Fed is clearly not ready to move on this. And and based on this language, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't submit a national application uh, for for a bank involved primarily in crypto assets uh, for at least another year, uh, unfortunately. So um, again, uh, not like rah rah pro crypto uh, piece, obviously, but I think it's important to understand. So so read the guidelines. Um, obviously go out and support Caitlin. I think uh, what she's trying to accomplish and what Custodia is doing has its merits. It, it's grounded in um, working with underbanked entities. Uh, just, you know, unfortunately, uh, it is not, the, the attitude of the board uh, doesn't reflect um, what needs to be in place in order for something like this to pass. Thank you again for your time. Again, if you like this uh, quick take and, and you like our content in general, please be sure to like and subscribe below. Uh, check out our other presentations and go ahead and read our Medium articles while you're at it too. We have over 100 posts there over the past couple of years. Thanks again for your time. Uh, I appreciate you, uh, you sticking with me uh, and uh, have a great rest of your week.